Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my series where we talk about classical mythology while I crochet. Today, we're going to talk about the differences between Ares and Athena on the battlefield. And this is illustrated, I think, most perfectly by book five of the Iliad. If you've seen some of my Trojan War saga, this takes place right after the truce between Menelaus and Paris, which was interrupted because as Menelaus was winning, Aphrodite plucked Paris off the battlefield. And then Athena went and inspired one of the archers on the Trojan side to take a shot at Menelaus. Book five starts with Athena finding a Greek warrior of good stock named Diomedes and giving him the courage of his father. She's kind of more divinely inspiring him at this point and guiding him towards the middle of the battlefield where most people were struggling, but she's not getting directly involved. She then finds Ares and takes him by the hand and sits him over at the shore and says, you know what, let's sit out of this, let's let the mortals sort it out themselves, even though she just intervened with Diomedes. Diomedes starts wiping the floor with the Trojans. They are so scared of him. He is taking out people left and right, looting them, taking the horses from their chariots. He's just knocking everybody down. Pandarus, the same archer on the Trojan side who had ended the truce, then decides to aim his bow at Diomedes, and it's a hit. It hits him in the shoulder. But it's not a fatal wound, despite Pandarus's bragging. Diomedes, he gets tended to by his team, but he prays to Athena and he says, I know you liked my dad. Help me out, girly pop. And so she reinvigorates him and she unclouds his eyes so that he can see past the mist and tells him, I don't really want you to get in any fights with any of the immortals on the Trojan side. But if you see Aphrodite, cut that bitch. Diomedes eventually got that opportunity once Aphrodite went onto the battlefield to save her son Aeneas, who was trying to save one of his fellow soldiers from being looted after he had been taken out. So as Aphrodite is picking up her son and trying to fly off with him, Diomedes gets Aphrodite right in the wrist with his spear, and she drops him and starts crying. She goes to Ares, borrows his chariot to go back up to Olympus, where she then cries to her mommy, who in this version is Dione. She actually has a mom in this one. Apollo then steps in to grab Aeneas, but Diomedes tries to fight Apollo. Not once, not twice, not three times, but four times before Apollo loses his shit and puts him in his place and is like, I'm a god you're immortal, what the hell are you doing? And then he's able to take Aeneas to Leto and Artemis who heal him and he eventually gets put back on the battlefield. Apollo then goes to Ares who's still sitting on the bank and he's like, hey, we need you out there, dude. They hit your girlfriend, they hit Aeneas over here. Can you help us out? So Ares inspires the Trojan troops by making them fight with each other. He disguises himself as one of the foreign allies of the Trojans, and because he's the one trying to get the troops rallied up, that then causes a Trojan Sarpedon to call out Hector and be like, why is this foreign dude the one telling us that we should get going when you told us that you could have handled this alone with all of your brothers and brothers-in-laws? Like, why? And so Hector then starts getting his troops going as well. Ares rides into battle with the Trojans, accompanied by his usual entourage. We have strife, hate, uproar, Deimos, Phobos, all of the usual people that he hangs out with when he is battling. And then Diomedes starts to back off because he concedes Ares. And he warns the other Greeks, Ares is on the battlefield. When Diomedes backs down a bit, Hera and Athena then ride in. Hera driving the chariot and Athena being the person with, you know, the weapon on the side. And they find Diomedes and ask him, you know, like, what's up? Why did we stop fighting? And Diomedes says, you told me I can only fight Aphrodite if I see an Olympian. So because Ares is out there, I warned everybody and we stopped like he didn't try to fight Apollo. Athena then says, oh, disregard that order. Go ahead and fight Ares. So she takes Diomedes on a chariot herself, and she helps him guide his spear into Ares' stomach. Ares then races off to Olympus, just like his girlfriend Aphrodite had, and he goes and cries to Zeus. And Zeus 
doesn't really feel sorry for him. He's like, you know what? You're a two-faced liar because you told Hera and Athena you would fight on their side and then you switch sides for Aphrodite. And if you weren't my son, you would probably be in the pits of Tartarus right now. I would say there's also a little bit of a scapegoat and golden child dynamic in that because Athena very much gets to use Zeus's armor and his thunderbolts even sometimes. But Ares, he's just like, we only put up with you because you're family. 